I'd like to thank everybody for coming. I just want to give you a quick overview of um, what we're going to talk about today. So make sure we have the right, the right people for the right seminar. We're going to talk about networking, and specifically in terms of media, network, audio, and video. We won't really be doing any video demos today, but the gist of what we're going to talk about covers both audio and video. Um, the topics are going to be DLNA, UPMP, which are ostensibly the same thing. And uh, as, a, as a manufacturer's representative from AudioQuest, um, I want to let you know that this is not going to be an infomercial to go out and buy more AudioQuest, although I would love it if you all did. Um, the, the point of this, this seminar today is just to kind of answer some questions about what DLNA is, what UPNP is, what's networking, what do I need to get started, what are my product opportunities, what exists out there. And then um, it will become sort of an infomercial because we're going to go into uh, a music player and a music manager, media manager, something that manages your music, your videos, your, your, your photos, called Jay River, um, only because I'm a super fan of the, the company, and I've, I've bought and downloaded and tried every media player out there, and I try to be as unbiased and as agnostic and as objective and as politically correct as possible, but really there, there just categorically isn't another media player out there, whether you're doing locally connected DACs like a USB DAC, or if you're doing network connected devices like the Pioneer N50 that we have back here, or any of the new current TVs which are DLNA capable, or the surround sound receivers that are DLNA capable. There just categorically isn't a software solution out there that can approach what J River does. So typically, I try and say try everything, and you see what you like the best. And I, I still, if you want to go through all the pain and suffering I did, knock yourselves out. Um, but I find that, that J River is absolutely spectacular for uh, the topic that we're going to cover today. And I was able to uh, enlist Matt Ashland to join us. And Matt is the architect, the software architect behind uh, Jay River. And he's the person that makes it so easy and intuitive to use. And he's also somewhat of a folk hero in audiophile circles because he created a high performance lossless file format called Monkey's Audio. Monkeys Audio. So if you guys have ever seen that Monkey's Audio pop up in one of your file format options, that was created by Matt. So um, I'll let Matt tell you a little bit about himself and Jay River. Uh, sure. Uh, you know, after that introduction, I should just leave, would be <laughs> the smartest thing to do. Uh, uh, like you said, I'm with Jay River. I've been there about uh, 10 years. And, uh, you know, we started seeing these DLNA devices. It wasn't called DLNA. We saw. Uh, Digital Living, Living Network Alliance, or also known as UPNP, which is Universal Plug and Play. They're the same things. Right. So when this started, there were these odd little boxes that started showing up, and they were made by the networking companies. Uh, Netgear, there was a Netgear MP101, and there was a, there were some Linksys ones, and they were just they were these gross little boxes. But the idea we thought was, wow, that's really kind of amazing that you can get music anywhere in your house that you've got a network, and some of them had wireless. So you just drop this thing in your garage, drop it in your basement, drop, you know, drop it anywhere, and you've got music. And we're like, this is interesting. At the time, it was called UPnP. It was just kind of an emerging standard. A little, it was really ragged early on. Getting each device would require this, you know, a little bit of just kind of, you have to, I don't know, you had to wrestle each one to the ground separately. You had to pet, pet it gently. <laughs> yes. Uh, and we didn't know if this would go anywhere. We just thought, hey, this is kind of interesting. And this was probably maybe eight years ago, maybe 10 years ago. But what's happened is then a lot of the companies came together and formed a DLNA group, uh, kind of a club of manufacturers. And they basically relabeled UPNP, which was the thing that powered those weird little boxes, and they called it DLNA. And now what we're seeing is there's a good chance if you just you go buy a TV, or if you buy a receiver, or just a Blu-ray player, if you buy an Xbox, a PlayStation 3, so, so many devices now have this capability. Uh, DLNA is just part of what they do, and they've done kind of a bad job marketing it. I, I'll give you an example. Uh, my father-in-law bought a TV, Doesn't not a computer guy at all, and he's like, oh, I was talking to the guys at Best Buy, and they said, I need to do, I don't know, I need this weird box to be able to get it to play my music. I'm like, really? You sure it's not networked and have DLNA support? And he's like, DLNA what? You know, he didn't, he had no idea what I was talking about. And we, uh, 
Well, sure enough, we go down to his TV and I said, why don't you just, just run our software and let's just, let's just see what happens. You know, and he, sure enough, the TV had support and within like a couple minutes we were looking at all his pictures on the TV, we were listening to music, you know, and we had videos playing. And he's like, wow, I didn't even know what DLNA was. So I wanna, I wanna interject here. This is kind of, it's kind of dumbfounding to, 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 to us because we were so familiar with DLNA and the general consumer's not, but there's, there's over 11,000 DLNA models to choose from in the United States currently at, at this moment. There's 11,000 products that are DLNA compliant. Every TV is, every mainstream surround sound receiver is, almost every Blu-ray player is, uh, the Android phones are. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it, it, it is really truly a universal standard that nobody in the universe knows anything about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, well said. And so, you know, we've just kind of been chipping away at it, trying to support these devices, and they've, it's gotten easier, luckily, that, that it's less ugly hacks. As more people do it, there's more things to test against. The, the DLNA, when you get certified, there's some tests that your hardware has to pass. So there's like at least a low watermark for how well it'll work. Uh, and now we're starting to see this sort of bleed over into the audiophile community. So there's DACs that have, that are network attached. And that may be the most interesting thing to this audience, that you can buy a really nice DAC, drop it anywhere in your house, and if you've got your music on a computer, you know, you're set. That's an audiophile system right there. Yeah, so, so we want to talk about some of the ingredients. Um, what do you need to be in the DLNA UPnP game? And then just as a side note, Apple has its own ecosystem that exists that does similar things called AirPlay. If you, are you guys familiar with AirPlay? Yeah, that's good marketing. Um, so there's AirPlay, but AirPlay has some limitations to it that make it somewhat less attractive to the audiophile. Uh, when compared to DLNA. The way the AirPlay works is it, everything instantaneously sees each other. There's, it's not difficult to get devices that are AirPlay certified to see one another. In fact, it's, 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 it's really hard not to get the devices to see each other. The only limitation as an audio file is it basically works at 1644. So if you had a 2496 file, it's not gonna play at 2496. I think it might do 1648 as well. So it does, I'm, I'm certain it does 1644 and I'm pretty sure it does 1648. But if you're into high resolution files, AirPlay is limited uh, because it won't play those files in their native format. Now DLNA is really interesting because it will play the file in whatever format you have it stored on your hard drive. It's completely agnostic to the, the, um, to the file resolution. And the products are semi, semi agnostic to the file format. Okay, and I'll get to that a little bit later, but let's talk about the ingredients. So the first thing you need is you need your music, you need a storage device. So before I get going, who here is comfortable with networking? Who does networking? Oh, this is great. Who's not comfortable with networking? And don't be ashamed. I, I, I wasn't comfortable up until a year ago. Okay, that's cool. That's great. Because it, this is intimidating to the uninitiated. And, and as my wife, who's in the room here, can attest, um, there were nights where I was ready to throw things through the window. So it was, it's a learning curve, and you know you have to be patient. So what you need is you need a storage device. So, so your storage device could be something like your, a computer that you see here. That would mean that your, your music and or your movies and photos are stored here, or they're attached to a local hard drive that's connected to the computer. The other thing you can do, and uh, I'll pick this up carefully, what I have here is a network attached server. So I've got all of my media on here. I've got about 1.3 terabytes worth of music that are stored on here, um, and that's where my music is kept and my, my movies are kept. So you need some form of storage device. You need a router. You need, you need something that can assign your IP addresses. Everything has to get an address so that the products can communicate with one another. So you have to have storage, you need to have a router, and then if you want to play your music or your movies, you need to have uh, what's called a renderer. And in this particular case, the renderer is from Pioneer. It's called the Pioneer N as in Nancy, N50. And uh, I've shamelessly plugged this product twice already this weekend. I'm going to plug it one more time in case you haven't heard about it. It's a phenomenal little device. It's a $500 DAC. It's $500 retail. It does DLNA UPnP. It does AirPlay. It has a USB port on the front of it so you can connect your iPhone or your iPad or your iPod. It has an asynchronous USB connection on the back. Uh, it has Toslink and SPDIF digital inputs. It really is just an absolutely phenomenal workhorse. And if you haven't, who's uninitiated? Who doesn't have computer audio at home? Larry, I know you don't. 
Um, so if you don't and you're a little hesitant, you're not sure how much money to spend and you're not sure what direction you want to go in, this is a pretty interesting device because it sounds really good for, for the cost, for 500 bucks. It's, it, it hits way above its, its weight. And it gives you the opportunity to try any and all digital connectivity formats. So you can, you can use USB or you can use network and you can do whatever you want. So we have to have, we have, to have our storage, our router, and we have to have our renderer. So we, and then the last thing we need to do is we need to have what's called our controller, or control point. So the controller can be in a number of different locations. So in this particular system, we've got three potential scenarios to control the music. I can literally control my music from the, uh, from the desktop. So Matt, go ahead and just change songs here real quick. So Matt was literally able to control the music, find the media, control it, send it to the Pioneer N50 from, from the desktop or the laptop. Right, and so an important thing to remember here is that this could be anywhere in your house. It's networked, so it doesn't have to be three feet away. It can be, you know. A thousand feet. Right. You have a thousand foot limit with, uh, with, with a wired network device. So that's, what, that's our first control point. The second control point could be my, my iPhone or my iPad or my Android tablet or phone. There are a number of different ways to connect to the computer wirelessly. So I can be anywhere in the home, and I can control the music to the location it's at. And this is, this is also something interesting. You can do it from the phone or you can do it from the computer. I can control multiple locations in my home. Who's got more than one location in their house where they have music, more than one stereo? Pre pretty much everybody. You, so you, can, uh, you, can, you could have these types of devices throughout the house, and you could control the different locations. So maybe I have zone one as my living room. And I, in the Pioneer N50, I can go in and I can change the name of the product from N50 to living room. All, almost all of these DLNA devices allow you to change what their name appears to be on the network. So you could, you could say kitchen. You could say living room. You could say bedroom. You could say children's playroom, anything you want. So from the control point, I can then select music to those locations, different songs at the same time, and even different movies at the same time, as long as you have a network with enough bandwidth to push all of that media, all of that data. So that's your, that's your second control point. We've got the computer could be my control point, a handheld device could be the control point, and mo most, if not all of the devices come with a remote control, and you can actually con you can control the product from the front panel. So maybe I'm in that room and I want to you know, my wife is in one room and has her music playing, and I'm in another room, and I can just choose the songs I want, and she can choose the songs she wants, and everybody's happy. So those are your control points. So, so kind of just to reiterate, you've got your storage, you've got your router, you've got your render, and you've got your controller. Those, those, are, the, those are the essential ingredients that you need to get yourself up and running. Now, um, right now, my, my computer is running in, in Windows 7, which is J River is only at this point compatible uh, with Windows, and the future will be whatever the future will be. Um, but if you're a Windows user, JRiver is the, uh, the option that I recommend here for DLNA. How many people here are Apple users, have Apple computers at home? Okay. How, who's got Windows here? Everybody else. Okay, so, so this is great. You guys, this would be really easy because Windows 7 is, has DLNA embedded in it? Well, sort of. Windows Media Player can do Play too, but it's kind of crummy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, all you really need for DLNA is a network stack and then a program. So, like, you, in other words, Media Center works fine on Windows 2000 or, you know, even Windows 98, I guess. You, you could. So there's nothing inherent in the OS to enable DLNA. Okay, so DLNA is pretty, pretty easy to do on a Windows side. Apple doesn't acknowledge or support DLNA, which is not that big of a deal because there are other companies out there that do. So if you're an Apple user and you want to do DLNA, there are a couple of programs you can download. Uh, one of them is free, and then they have an extra charge for the service. It's called iConnect, E-Y-E -E Connect. If you go to El Gato software, you can download iConnect. The free version will allow you to push music only. The $45 version will allow you to push music, movies, and your photographs, if you'd like to. And then there's another company called Playback um, from... Um, just type in playback DLNA and, and the Yaz, Yaz Soft, sorry, Y-A-Z Soft. 
Yassoft is $15, and uh, for $15, Yassoft will allow your Apple computer to push movies or movies or uh, your photos. So with Apple, you've got to download that program if you want um, your music or your media to be pushed over it. The one downside to that is, is you're, when you're using something like iConnect or you're using playback, your computer now cannot be a controller. It's just, it's just a server. It's just a server. There's, there's no remote control features with something like iConnect or with Yassoft. So you're back to using your phone or the controller that comes with the media device. So, um, you know, really, I, I guess I would have to say that if you want to do DLNA and UPnP and you want really rich features and you want every option in terms of control, really you're better off in, in the Windows world. There, there is another option called Twonky. Have, has anybody here ever heard of Twonky? And Twonky is agnostic. They make, they make uh, programs for both Apple and for Windows. Um, so you can, you can find all your media and you can control your media from the, the desktop or from a phone or from the device itself. But the user interface and the, the, the graphic user interface um, aren't as comprehensive and as intuitive as they are in JRiver. So those, those, are your basic, those are your basic ingredients. At this point, does anybody have any questions? You said you can use your iPhone to use an iPad. A absolutely, or any Android device, a tablet or, an iP or, 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 the, or the Android phone, yeah. And if you're, if you're on the Windows side and you like iPads, uh, be sure to check out J Remote. I really, a guy called Les Paul wrote that for J River. He did a great job. It's just a really sexy interface. Uh, it's a really fun way, and it lets you do multiple zones. So you've got your living room and your kitchen, your basement. Just a really nice way to control it from anywhere. J Remote on the iPad? You put J Remote on the iPad, and then you have a Windows system with Media Center. I think it's, it's $9.99. Yeah, it is. A $9.99 at the App Store. And then do they make one that's compatible with Android? No, for Android, you use Gizmo. Can you talk a little bit about Gizmo? Can you explain how the sure. Gizmo control works? You know, I wish we could get it up on the screen. Uh, Gizmo is, is Jay Rivers' Android program. That's, it does two things primarily. One is it can act as a remote control uh, for Media Center. And that's probably the more interesting thing here, but I'll just mention the other. The other thing is that it can play any of your content, your movies, your images, and your audio on your phone. So if you have a data plan or you're on a Wi-Fi network, you can use your phone and, and headphones anywhere to listen to any of your music, you know, in, in any format. It's, it's pretty slick that way. Or, you know, driving in your car. It's your full library of music on your phone. Uh, so I can be anywhere in the world, and I can use Gizmo, and I can get my music. Listen to your music, absolutely. So I can take my whole music collection anywhere I want to go. Yes. And I don't have to be in the house with the computer. That's right. I could be in Thailand. And... And it works great for images, and, and it works great for images and video too. Video has been a big push for us doing MP4, H.264, really high quality, nice video streaming it. Uh, so Gizmo, that's one thing is playing on the phone. But the, the more interesting thing in this model is it's just a really simple remote. Uh, we have a term at J River. I, it's maybe not politically correct. We call it uh, well, it's, it's actually called wife acceptance factor. Sometimes we call it spouse acceptance factor. Uh, it's you, it, anything that gets really nerdy, people start, they call it WAF. And uh, my wife's here, so I can say this. Uh, <laughs> this, is a, this is something that, you know, I just kind of showed it to her once on her phone, and it just, <laughs> and it just kind of, it just took off. It's really neat around our house. So, you know, we've got multiple zones. I've got the basement, we've got the living room, and the kitchen, and the bedroom. And it's just, you pull, she pulls out her phone, let's listen to this, Doop, you know, and it's just, a couple seconds, and there's music playing in that zone. Oh, let's do you know, and it's 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 so cool to me to see that, uh, and that's that's what Gizmo is. It's a really simple way to control this whole thing. You know, you've always got your phone in your pocket, at least if you're like me, so you've always got your remote for your media in your pocket. Okay, so so I, I like to stop and ask. We we want this to be more of a forum where we're all able to communicate and share ideas because I bet there's a lot of advanced people out here. Um, does anybody have any questions before we kind of move into some of the pitfalls? Uh, we do not. There's a third party that wrote one. It's not, he doesn't pursue it with very much conviction. Uh, I don't, I'm sorry. If you, if you go to our forum, you'll, you'll find it. Yes. I have an Apple iMac I bought just a little while ago. I've got music on there and I've got my own Dell Windows PC where I have most of my music. Can I take the music from both computers and like put it onto one of these NAS drives? Yeah, that's a good thing to do, probably. Uh, NAS is, is a pretty slick way to go. 
You know, or if you've got a computer that's on all the time, if you've got one that you consider your main computer that's always available, you know, put the, put the data on that. But if you'd like to be able to turn your computers off, put them to sleep, they get an S. There's really no, there's no right answer to that. It's just for preference, I guess. The one thing that would be nice about that is, uh, and I'll get, I'll get your question next. The one thing that would be nice about that is <clears throat> if you consolidate the library to one location, then you can point both the Dell and the Mac back to that location, and you can, they can both have the same complete library instead of having a partial library over here and a partial library over here. So there, there are, that's a really uh, good and efficient way to go. This, but does the J remote one for the iPad do the same thing as Gizmo does for the iPhone? Yes, exactly. Great, and they tell question. me it looks even better, so. Okay, um, so who, who here is actually doing DLNA at home? Is, do we got some DLNAers? We got a few? Okay, cool. Has anybody ever ran into an issue where they may have a file format where their DLNA device doesn't recognize that, that, that file and it can't play it? You have had that problem? I have too. <laughs> Um, I'm a heavy-duty Apple user. Please don't hate me. Um, it's f funny that when I uh, I remember a boss told me one time the three things you should never talk about in business are <laughs> sex, politics, and religion. Mm -hmm. Well, now there's four things you should never ever talk about: sex, politics, religion, and operating systems. You know, people get pretty divisive about operating systems. But at any rate, I'm an app. I'm a pretty heavy-duty Apple user. I use iTunes, and I and and all of my music is stored in a file format called AIFF. And when I started to acquire DLNA devices uh, for AudioQuest, so we could start to set up a lab and start to you know, have our own per in internal learning lounge, we would run into issues often where a device would play, say, the 1644 AIFF file, but as soon as we sent it anything with a higher resolution than that, say a 24-bit 48 AIFF up to 24-bit 192, the device would crash. The dev device didn't understand what that file was. And I've ran into that problem with um, a number of different encoded file formats. There's, a, it, there's an easy way around that if you've got multiple f file formats on your hard drive, um, it, particularly in Jerry River. Could we come out? Yeah. Could we go into the menu? I can drive here. So we're going to go into the tools and go into the advanced options. And we're going to show you something where you can actually do your transcoding in the computer. And you can choose a single file format that your devices see. So if you have multiple different devices in your house, and one device may play something, and another device might not play the same exact thing. Uh, it's not even advanced. So here we go. Uh, in, in Options Media Network, you can you do add or configure DLNA servers. And we're, it's a little unique in this respect, because most companies try to make a you run one server that serves all the devices, and that's a great idea, but we found that it just doesn't work. Because if you've got three kinds of devices, like especially an Xbox is totally different than a PS3, and then there's the DLNA crowd, but they're just different. You can't do it all with one server. So you'll see there's a list of servers here, and you know the default one, you must have customized this a little. Uh, but we've got this server, and down here it says, well, what do you want to do with the audio? Uh, and you can say, always convert it, and convert it to uncompressed. And there's a, there's, this gets a little nerdy, these choices. You're, you're going to just have to try a few until you find one that works, because uh, it's a little bit of alphabet soup with the devices, whether they'll support it. But I, uh, the devices have to support MP3 to get DLNA certification. They should support uh, WAVE, uncompressed, but the, it, sometimes there's warts. But anyway, so the, the point is if we say always convert and uncompressed, any file on your computer, the computer does the decoding. And that's a really good thing because you're for two, for two reasons. One, your computer is really fast. And number two, it's got the highest quality decoders for any format. I mean, the, the reference decoding you should do on a computer. So MP3 decoding, AAC decoding, FLAC decoding, any type of decoding. And then you're just sending raw, the raw, you know, the PCM, the perfect data to the DAC. And that means any format you throw at it that the computer can play, now your device can play. And like he's saying, that's really important because one of the most frustrating things can be with these devices, they, they just don't play all the formats you have. You know, it's, it's a lot of work to support the, the gazillion formats. So we, at AudioQuest, we have a Pioneer receiver, uh, we have the Marantz receiver, we have an Onkyo Integra receiver, and all three devices don't recognize all the same formats, which just kind of can be a little frustrating. So. Uh, in our in our sound lab, we have it all set exactly like this, so only wave goes out. So we have 
MP3 files on the server, we have AIFF files on the server, we have Apple lossless on the server, we even have one of your monkey, a couple of your monkey folders on there. But everything gets converted into computer and the, the, the audio devices only see a wave. They see the, 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 the audio data just as a wave file format. So this will make things very predictable, very, very user friendly in the house for, for yourselves and for any other members living in the house that make for greater reliability and greater predictability. What about video? Um, <laughs> you know, video, uh, who here is interested in video over DLNA? Uh, a few. So, so the video is by far the most challenging, or maybe it's just because we've been doing audio longer, we've kind of got it licked. We can, you know, we can convert to an MP3 on the fly and it'll just, the device doesn't even know it's being converted. And the same with converting to PCM. It, we've, we've really got that problem licked. Video is really a lot harder because, you know, we, we've got MP4 as the emerging standard, but it, it's, one device might support it, one might if you give it a certain MIME type, some support, like, a, I don't know, it, it gets way too technical about how, whether it supports like a time stream or a MPEG-2 or whatever. But the point is that that's a little trickier. The thing that really makes these things sing is when they do something called time-based seeking in video. Uh, and when they support that, and like the PS3 works really well, Sony TVs work really well, uh, what that gives you is it can just jump in at any point and start playing. And if it seeks, it just starts over. And there's, there's never a case where the computer has to convert this ahead of time. It just converts it as the device needs it. And then when the device stops playing, it just throws it away. And it's all on the fly. Uh, is that a setting that you have? Yeah, prepared? sure. I, so we could say... Always convert video, and like let's pick an MP4, 720p. That's going to look. I can't use this mouse very well. There we go. You know that's MP4, really high quality, 720p. It's going to look really good. Uh, and this it just depends on the device how well it will work. But anyway, so to, to, to summarize, video conversion has been the trickier thing. It's something we actively work on. Like I was mentioning, MP4, H.264, like the really high quality stuff pushing it to Android tablets and Android phones has been one of our recent thing, and that's all built on the same stuff. You know, Android talks to it a lot like this DLNA device talks to it. It's all connected. Um, can we talk a little bit more about video? Can we talk yes. about ripping uh, DVDs and things like that? Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just, uh, ripping DVDs is bad because, well, I, you know, it's, it's like this gray area that we have to kind of mince our words about because I personally, I believe if you buy a movie, I have the right to put it on my computer. Not everybody agrees with that, so we have to be like a little careful what we say. Uh, if you have ripped videos, you're on film. I am being filmed. Uh, but it, you know, if you have ripped videos, they they play great. You can play them with the LNA. You can play them on your phone. You can play them on your computer. Uh, I'll, I'll, can I can I take over? Because I've got nothing to lose. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So you can sue me, Sony. Um, I use, uh, we use, DL we've recently, my wife and I have started using the J River on our home computer, and we've been ripping our DVD collection. And in terms of what I own as DVDs, they're just all concert DVDs. We love concert DVDs. So I've been ripping all my concert DVDs. And what's nice about that is um, they're, they're, they're a bit perfect. Um, I've got all the audio that I want on there, and then I can, I can then send the video to my television set, and then I use the local USB port on my computer to do uh, the audio conversion, because I've got a USB audio DAC. So I'm kind of doing two things at, one, at the same time. I'm, I'm sending DLNA to the display device, and I'm sending the audio over my USB port to my local attached DAC. I could also send, you are actually sending the, the audio up to the TV when you send the video, and you can use the return channel on HDMI to come back into your surround sound receiver. So let's say that you had you know, a couple of TVs around the house and you had some movies and maybe you're having a party and you want to have, you know, Led Zeppelin's going to release the O2 Arena concert in Blu-ray. Does anybody here like Led Zeppelin? Actually, who doesn't like Led Zeppelin? <laughs> no one's going to admit to that. So anyway, you, you, uh, you could, let's say you're going to have a Led Zeppelin party. Who's Led Zeppelin? They, uh, they're a new band from Seattle. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> The, anyway, the point is, is maybe you wanna you wanna show a holiday. You you rip Charlie Brown's Christmas, and all the, the family's all coming over, and you've got a TV in the kitchen, and a TV in the living room, and TV in the children's room, and everything's DLNA compliant. You can just put Charlie Brown's Christmas on random repeat, on repeat and it's playing all over the house. I didn't put any movies yeah, in this I this one. Okay. 
because I don't want Sony to sue me. Um, but anyway, it's a really powerful tool with 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 uh, some of these un, to be, to be unnamed uh, media center 17s that you can put your DVDs in there and you can port the audio and the video throughout your house. It's, now, I could also probably get that from WebGizmo if I was on the other side of the planet. Playing video with WebGizmo is HTML5, which is real, oh boy, that's really tricky how HTML5 and video, like eat just different browsers do different things and they, it's, it's like Swiss cheese right now. So WebGizmo playing video is the one thing it's not good at. So we'll, use, we'll just think of WebGizmo as our global radio station. Yes, it's good for audio and remote control. Okay, cool. All right, so um, that kind of, yes, sir? Does um, DLNA support DVD menus? No, they, it does not. There's really no mechanism at all for that because DLNA is file-based. And you're, you're touching on an interesting point because there are some limitations to DLNA. You get there's some really good things and there's some kind of tricky things and you know the good thing is you can put it anywhere around your house uh, one of the bad things is just like you said it's file based that makes DVD menus a challenge uh, something people here may care about it makes gapless audio playback a challenge so like your classical music to go between two tracks without any kind of tick uh, I, I don't know if any devices do it right uh, there's some will we're working with some manufacturers to try to get it but it's still it's just not quite there uh, the, the timing using it, there's a little bit of latency, so using DLNA like, to do uh, video can be a little, using it, you know, if, if you're trying to decide, should I buy a DAC, should I get a DLNA DAC or a USB DAC, uh, there's some advantages to each, like the USB DAC is great if you wanted to watch video, if you wanted to watch video, the audio, like you were saying, audio through the video, uh, you, anyway, I guess the point is that there's kind of, there's, there's, there's advantages to, uh, to both, you know, and we can delve more into that if you're, if you're interested in why you would might pick DLNA versus a USB DAC. So a USB DAC is, is a locally attached DAC. It's not a network attached DAC. It sits right next to your computer. You've got a 15 foot limit. That's, that's the length. That's the maximum allowable length, five meters from the USB organization that's that was set a long time ago for handshaking and things like that. The DLNA, you have up to roughly up to 1,000 feet of connectivity. So to, always everything is pluses and minuses and advantages. Anybody have a, you have a question? Now if, I, if I ripped the CD as a single file, I so. then, I would, then I wouldn't have the, uh, the clicks. Is that right? Yeah, there's, you can rip CDs as they call them uh, complete ISO rips. So is that what you do? Rip to an ISO file? Sure. That's one approach, uh, but normally you still end up importing as individual tracks. And the DLNA device won't be all that happy with giving it one huge file. It's kind of unruly. Uh, there's just not, there, there's something called set next where you're supposed to be able to tell the DAC, hey, you're playing this song, this is what you're going to play next. And it's called set next transport. It's, you'll, people will call it set next support. And some of the DACs are starting to think about this because if they know what song's coming next, they can get ready and do a seamless transition. But the reason it's hard for them is internally most of these things are a Linux box. And they, when each time you give it a file, it starts a program that plays it, and then that program finishes, and a new file comes along, and they start a new program to play it. And that, that process of starting a program, stopping it, starting it, stopping it, isn't conducive to being gapless. To, to do gapless, you really have to start a program and keep it running, you know, well, the next track comes along. Uh, so if you buy a DAC, ask them, can you do gapless? Do you support set next? Uh, anybody else have any questions before? Yes. Yeah, on long that same vein, if, if you want to rewind or fast forward a little bit, do you have issues with the latency? No, you, you definitely can seek uh, with the LNA. That's not a problem at all. Oh, okay. Some of the, we've seen devices that don't support it nicely, but they should. There's really no excuse for that. No, it shouldn't. It should just work. It, you should be able to see. We, we pretty much, it's uh, unbelievably, unbelievable how expeditious this seminar has been because we've kind of touched upon everything that um, we, we really wanted to touch upon. So I really want to open up the floor to questions if anybody has any other questions. But I'm getting a feeling that there's a pretty advanced group in here and people are really comfortable with every. I'm preaching to the choir is, I guess, the feeling I'm getting. But please ask questions. Yes. I do have a question. Uh, one of the problems I ran into in the past with Jay River was 
uh, River 16 recognizing 17, or 17 recognizing 16. Is that, is that me, or is that, do they all? Well, they're supposed to be separate programs. Uh, once you're comfortable with one, uninstall the old ones. Just get them out of the way so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, Apple options, Apple options? Apple options. Oh, yes, I can. It's kind of, it's a little bit far afield from DLNA, but if, if you don't mind. Uh, there's a good wiki we have on that called audio output modes. Uh, there's two, two main ways. If you're going to talk to your sound card, and I can show you. Let's get rid of this. I, sw I swear I didn't steal <laughs> Windows. I bought the, the installation disk, and I've installed it 100 times, and it keeps telling me that this is a trial. So the question is, audio output modes, how do you pick one, why are there so many? Uh, it's kind of a long, boring story about why there are so many, It's because <laughs> Windows is old. Uh, so if you get a DAC and it's got an ASIO driver, use it. You'll know if it has an ASIO driver because it'll come with a disk, the website will say it. If it doesn't, and many DACs don't come with a driver, just the best thing, if you've got a modern computer, meaning Vista or newer, use Wasapi event style. It just, it's really reliable. It does kind of a cool thing where when you pause the audio, the DAC doesn't even know it's being paused. Because we've had, depending on the driver, we've had some DACs that get in trouble if you pause them. They just don't handle it nicely. But with this, we just write silence to it. So it doesn't know it's paused. It thinks it's playing. Uh, really reliable. Works great. Uh, what, is, what does Wasabi stand for? Windows Audio Service API, I think. Something. It's, it was added to Windows Vista. It's sort of the new audio stack. So when I said this is kind of a boring history, like the oldest wave out, no one would ever use. It was like Windows 95 kind of stuff. And then they... Uh, I run that at home. Right. <laughs> it's just been backwards since then. And then they added direct sound, which is, it's actually our default because it always works. It's really compatible. But you, it's not what you want to use if you're looking for audio quality. You want to talk, we call it uh, the hardware direct connection. And I, and I can actually show you what that looks like. Is the Wasafi hardware? Yes, absolutely. It's called... It, exclusive or direct, and that means once we've got that sound card locked, you can't play anything else while it's locked. You know, it's exclusive to that. Uh, some people get surprised because they go to their web browser and, you know, why can't I watch YouTube? But that's, that's why. You've got to stop playback. But here, let's play locally. There's this little thing we call audio path that just says everything that's happening to the signal. And if if it's direct, it'll, the, the button turns blue and it'll say, hey, it's direct. And this is saying it's not direct because we're using direct sound. The default's not direct. We're not getting a bit perfect output. Uh, we could try making it direct if, if we want. What the heck? Let's see if it works. So I said, that's good. Let's try it. Yeah, there you go. You got a blue button. That's good. And now it'll tell you, direct connection. Matt, would those formats sound different? Direct sound versus Wasabi? <laughs> okay, so that's a really ticklish question uh, because it's kind of like, uh, do cables make it sound better? No, absolutely not. All <laughs> cables sound the same. <laughs> uh, yeah, because you want to, at the very least, you want to bypass what's called the Windows Mixer or the K Mixer. Uh, it's built into Windows, and uh, by default, any audio played goes through this thing, and it's the Microsoft layer that does DSP and the mixing. And it's great because it runs everything at the same sample rate, and it makes it so if you have a browser and in this playing and five things playing, it, it all works. That's good for a user, but it also means you can't do bit perfect output between different sample rates. So you can set it to be bit perfect at one sample rate, but as soon as you throw another sample rate at it, it's not bit perfect. So at the very minimum, you want an audio output that's not going through the Windows Mixer, which is the ones I said, ASIO, uh, Wasapi event style. Um, I'm a shameless uh, and compulsive tweaker. Can we, can we try the same song with two different uh, formats and see if there's a difference? Oh, boy. You're going to really have to listen to hear the difference going through the K-Mixer. It's not going to be like, I mean, all we have is like laptop speakers, so it's not going to be but like. We can play it into here, right? Play it into this deck? Will it's that... not, not going to be like, wow, but it's. Okay. I mean, you can you can try if you, you guys want to try. Yeah. All right, let's let's do that. Let's so let's use uh, the last track. We'll use track nine and let's send it to the pioneer and see what we have. Well, so now sending it to the pioneer, we're back in DLNA land. Oh, so it has no effect on it. This is we kind of strayed away from DLNA land here because now we're talking about how you configure a computer. DLNA, it's up to the renderer to do the best thing. You send it just gets the file right, and 
It's I can't believe what a stroke of luck this is. The nice guys from AudioQuest left us with a USB cable. <laughs> so we're getting out of DLNA land and we're going into local land. Okay, so really what we want to do is we want to find out how much of an effect this, the, uh, the output has. So I'm going to go to the USB input. Okay, so if you want to um, get set up there and address, I don't think we're, we're, I think we probably have to go into the tools and select the, uh, uh, oh, it's a uh, uh, I don't know if it's selected, yeah. Thanks, I gotta catch Bye, Larry, have a nice trip back to Vancouver. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry, everybody, let's give him a, Alan, sorry. <laughs> Alan's brother Larry left yesterday. That was almost really smooth. That I, was yeah, almost really a good, that good job. That was my recovery. That was, so we're not seeing the... Is it? You know, it should show up as the Pioneer. Um, let me... As an audio device? Yeah, it's a USB, yeah. Do we have to select it in the... Yeah, do I have to Is that because it's live or did... All right, so we're not going to... There's, there's a kind of a rule we have when we demo. I don't know why this is, but whenever you demo something, it, as long as it's working great, you just keep going until you get totally stuck. Uh, that's what, you know, that's how I've always done it. It's like, hey, that's neat, that's neat. Let's try it. And then, then once you're totally stuck and you look stupid... All this stuff works at home. Then that's you the stop. thing that drives me crazy. So I think, I think really then, at this point, we could probably wrap up. And I, I, I hope this is really meant to be an introduction to DLNA, UPnP, and setting up a network. We attracted a, um, a more uh, experienced crowd than we had anticipated, so, which is great. It's nice to see so many people are using it. For the total noob that came in a little late, do um, you guys have good resources to find out more about the basics and looking up and stuff like that? There's, there's a number of good places to go. So there's computeraudiofile.com is a great place to go. Uh, Chris Conacher writes a lot of stuff on all things computer audio related, and there's a good forum on there. There are actually some manufacturers that offer honest and objective um, information. Lynn, I think, has done, as a hardware manufacturer, I think Lynn has done some of the best work. If you go to their website, they'll explain step by step what is a network, what is DLNA, what is UPnP, what are the control points, the server points, the render points, all of those things. Obviously, they're in business to sell product, which is awesome. They make great stuff. But they also offer pretty fair and objective advice. There's another site, um, it's very dry. Uh, it's a, more of a resource like a Wikipedia for computer audio. It's called the Well-Tempered Computer. So welltemperedcomputer.com is a great site for finding any kind of resources like that. I've heard AudioQuest. I was saving the best for last. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we, I didn't want you to forget. No, I, wouldn't, I would never <laughs> do that. So we, we actually, uh, AudioQuest, we made a book we call Computer Audio Demystified. It has, it does, there's absolutely nothing in here product related. This is all about... Um, how to get started and how to have a good time with computer audio, whether you want to use you know, the analog out of your computer or the TOS link out or the USB out or you want to do Ethernet networking. This is a nice book. These are free. They're up front here for anybody that wants to take them. These are a nice resource to get you started if you have any questions. You can also send any email you want to info at audioquest.com. All those emails come across my desk. I might not necessarily be able to answer the question, so typically when we get questions that we can't answer, I'll forward the email to a number of people like Gordon Rankin and Matt Ashland and the guys over at NAME. So I'll usually pull in resources from the industry, and usually within 12 hours we can get a competent answer back to people. So you can kind of use info at AudioQuest as a waypoint if you have any questions. And again, we're not, we don't know everything, but we, know, we think we know enough people that we can typically find an answer somewhere in our, in our, in our sewing circle. Yes, uh, well, both of you, but you first, I guess. Start back. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but yesterday's um, uh, seminar, did you say that you could get uh, better fidelity with downloading music if, if you put it on a, a dedicated computer? No. Uh, what, I, what I said is I, I f we find that you get better fidelity if the music is stored on an external hard drive, and that can be either on the network-attached server or on a locally connected hard drive. But we find that if you keep your music library 
in the same space or the same location, the same hard drive as your operating systems and your player systems, it tends to reduce the fidelity. So we prefer to keep all of our music and our, all of our media, if we can, on an external hard drive. And, it, and your options, again, for external are uh, locally connected, something like eSATA, USB or Firewire or th Thunderbolt, or you could use your network attached server like we're doing here right now. You know, I, I don't know off the top of my head. but it, I have it upstairs. We're using that as one of our demo systems at AudioQuest. So, yeah, we've had no problem with it. It just seems to go from song to song. They make great product, by the way. Another plug for those guys. They make phenomenal sounding network attached DACs. So if, uh, if that's... If that's it, if I've, we've gotten all the questions answered and we've solved all the universe's DLNA problems, um, thank you so much. This is our first attempt at a DLNA uh, UPnP computer audio um, seminar. So if there are any things you think we missed or any, any things you think we can do to improve for next year, just, again, send an email to info at AudioQuest or uh, what's your info at? J River. So info yeah. at J River, info at AudioQuest. We, Want to, we want to continue to help the community as much as we can to educate on some of all of these new formats and all these new technologies. And we, want, we also ask for your help because there's a lot of really smart people on both sides of the table. So we want to make sure we get, we get progress. So thank you very much.